Um, so hi, I'm Jake. Um, I uh, wanted to give a quick overview uh, as we kick off this discussion on tagging. Um, kind of as Diane alluded to, the um, I know that we have lots of folks here from different backgrounds, and not everyone has like hands-on experience with OSM and how the data model works. And so as we start to talk about the technical details of how we can better tag trails in OSM and how we can enable the community to do that tagging, um, I wanted to give like a, a really broad overview of how tags work and how we use them um, so that everyone's on the same page and can participate in that discussion. So um, OpenStreetMap's data model is really simple um, in that everything in OSM, the whole database is either a point or a line or a relation, uh, which is just a group of points and lines. OSM actually calls these nodes, ways, and relations, but I didn't want to get bogged down in terminology. So there's basically three kinds of things. And that means that we have to attach some kind of meaning to them to differentiate them, to say that like one line is a road and another line is a stream and a third line is the outline of a shopping complex or something. So we do that with tags. And tags are just uh, text that we attach to objects in the database to give them meaning. Uh, and any object, an object can have any number of tags, not just one. So I want to show you a really simple, oh, well, so sorry. Uh, each tag is a pair of a key and a value. Um, and we usually write it key equals value. Um, and both the key and the value can store any text. Um, so I can, I can make the key and the value say whatever I want them to. Um, this is a really simple example of three tags that you might find on an object in the database that represents a residential street. Um, so the first tag is made up of a key highway and a value residential. And the key highway is something that o OSM uses for basically any kind of traversable road from uh, interstates all the way down to surface streets and alleyways and even sidewalks. They're all just different sizes of highways in OSM. Um, and then the, so the key is highway, and then the value for that key in the tag is residential. And that kind of refines what we mean when we say highway. That adds some additional nuance and says, this is a residential street uh, as opposed to a motorway or a sidewalk. Um, and then there's another tag after that. That tag has the key name, and that's what we use to describe the names of things. And the value for name is any text you want to put there. So in this case, it's the name of that street. And the third tag is uh, the max speed tag, which describes speed limits on things. And that has a number with some units. Um, and these three tags, they appear here together to describe one object, but they don't have to. They can be recombined together with other tags in different ways to represent other objects. So highway, as I already mentioned, is something that's used for lots and lots of different kinds of things in the database. And not all highways have a name or a max speed. And likewise, not all things that have names are highways. Um, we have lots and lots of these general purpose tags. So this is a, a table of a few examples. Access is a tag that we use to describe who's allowed to visit or use a thing. It can have lots of different values and it can be applied to lots of different kinds of objects. And it has different meaning depending on what kind of object it's applied to. Um, fee is whether you have to pay to visit a thing. And again, you can apply that to all sorts of different objects in the, data, in the database. Elevation is how high above sea level is it? Operator is who runs it? Material and height are what, the, what it's made of and how tall it is. Horse is, can you bring your horse here? You can apply that tag to lots of different things to describe whether horses are allowed. Um, there are several different common patterns that you see if you're looking at when we group tags together on objects. And I wanna go through a few of them because they tend to be uh, although they're not rules, they are common patterns that you'll observe when you look at uh, groups of tags. The first one's called refinement. And refinement is when you have a key and a value that form one tag. In this case, natural equals water. So natural is a key that we use to describe cliffs and rocks and forests, and in this case, water areas. But we don't just want to say that it's water. We want to refine that claim and say, actually, it's a specific kind of water. It's a lake. So to do that, you, there's this common practice of taking a key with a value and then taking the value and using that as a key in a new tag, a second tag, which also gets attached to the same object. And that key gets further refined with its own value to add nuance to the, the initial claim made in the first tag. 
And here's another example. There are lots of different kinds of buildings in OSM. They can, there can be building equals hospital or building equals apartments, or in this case, building equals office. And we can further refine that claim and add another tag that says office equals government. This is a government office. The next pattern that's really common is called namespacing or sometimes prefixing. Um, this is where uh, you have, you wanna describe multiple attributes of some object, but they, they collide with each other and you need a way to differentiate them. So in this case, we have a road, highway equals residential, and it has a width attribute, 4.5 meters, but it also has bike lanes and sidewalks. And I wanna describe the width of those parts of it too. I can't just add another width tag. For one thing, it's not technically possible. You can't have two tags on an object with the same key, but also it wouldn't, even if you could, it wouldn't be clear which one referred to different parts of the road. So instead we add them under namespaces. And this is just a naming convention for the key part of the tag. We say cycleway colon width, and we call cycleway a namespace and then sidewalk colon width. And now we can describe different parts, you know, different parts of the road and their widths all on one object, but with different keys. Um, closely related to namespacing is prefixing. Prefixing is sometimes done uh, if you want to change the meaning of a key uh, without, you know, to describe some, uh, some adjective modifying that key. So in this, imagine that there's a building in your neighborhood that's an apartment building and it has a bakery in the ground floor. And uh, one day you walk by and you notice that it's being torn down and that the bakery's closed and you wanna go update that in the map. The canonical way to do that is with a prefix that we call a life cycle prefix, where we say demolished colon building equals apartments and was colon shop equals bakery. And this might seem a little bit cute, but there's actually a really important reason that we do this as opposed to adding a new tag to say, say demolished equals yes, because the problem is Lots of software is gonna be looking for things that are buildings to draw them on the map or looking for things that are shops to show them in search results. And uh, we, we wanna make sure that a demolished building doesn't show up on a map or that a, a closed shop doesn't show up in search results. And if we just add an additional tag, software would have to know to look for that additional tag. It would have to check for every building is demolished equals yes, also a tag on that object. And if so, don't draw it. But if instead we change the key, that will prevent most software from drawing that building. Uh, and the third concept I wanna show is suffixing. This is a lot like prefixing. Um, you tend to see this in a few different places. And one of them is when you have uh, information in multiple languages that you want to coexist. So in this case, a place like Tokyo has two different or several different names. There's one in English and one in Japanese. And you wanna record both of them in the map, but you can only have one name Tag, one tag with a name key. So instead you create two tags, one with name colon en and one with name colon ja for the, the language codes of those languages. Uh, and here's another example of suffixing where we have a bear key, max speed equals 50, that describes the speed limit on the road. But then we have a second tag where there's a key max speed colon conditional. And that is kind of a, a adding nuance to the first tag. The first tag is a broad general claim. And the second tag refines that claim to say, well, actually there's a condition that when the time is between 2300 and 0500, the max speed is different at 60. And there's a special syntax for that. It's just text, but software like renderers and routers can interpret that text and process the, the condition and do useful things with it. So, OpenStreetMap doesn't really have rules about how to use these tags, but we have guidelines. Um, and a few of them that are really important to the community. The first one is called map what's on the ground. Um, and basically what this means is the database should accurately and objectively describe reality. So when we're tagging things, we wanna tag them in ways that describe the real world and that describe the real world in ways that could be verified by someone who was standing there. Um, so we try not to include information that's invisible. There are exceptions to this, like country boundaries that don't always actually exist on the ground. But for the most part, OpenStreetMap maps things that exist physically in the world today. We don't map fictional things. We don't map historical data. Um, and, uh, and we try and map things and map objects in ways that are objective and not subjective. Um, the second principle is called any tags you like. And what this means is 
when you're mapping and you're contributing your data to OpenStreetMap, you are free to invent tags to suit your use case. There may not always be a well-established tag to describe a certain situation. And if there isn't, you should make one up that seems sensible to you, but please document it on the wiki so that other people can understand what you meant by that tag. That's really important. And the third principle is called don't map for the renderer. And when people say this, they're talking about the tendency for mappers to sometimes fall into the trap of imagining that the, the final output of OpenStreetMap is a visual map. Uh, and, and that if they add some data to the database and then they look at some map that's generated from OpenStreetMap data and it doesn't look the way they expected it to, the, some people's uh, temptation is to think that they've mapped it wrong and they should go back to the data set and change the data, uh, cha you know, re-tag it in a different way so that it shows up correctly when it's rendered. Um, but that's discouraged because renderers come and go and they evolve over time. We really wanna tag things in a way that best describes them in reality based on the consensus we've built around tagging and, and our, our data models. And we don't want to uh, bend the data to make it look prettier in a particular renderer because that tends to make the data itself worse. So um, consensus in how we tag things is really important to make the OpenStreetMap data set useful. You know, without it, it would just be a totally free form collection of information and, and there wouldn't be a lot of useful stuff that you could do with that data set. Um, and, we have a challenge in building consensus because of the scope of the project. It, we have about 45,000 monthly active contributors and about 120 million edits per month. Um, and uh, people are editing from all over the world. They speak many different languages. So it's really challenging to make sure that the data set has some semblance of consistency. Um, and the way that we try and solve this is with documentation. So we have this wiki, the OpenStreetMap wiki, which is a manual. It recommends best practices for tagging literally thousands of different real world objects and scenarios. It has recommendations for really detailed things like how to tag a building that was built as a church, but then converted to apartment buildings and is now closed, but is not slated for demolition. You'll find opinions on the wiki about the right combination of tags to express really nuanced and complex uh, scenarios. Um, the, the wiki is the, the flight manual for both new and experienced mappers. They consult the wiki frequently when deciding how to tag things. But it is just a collection of uh, opinions about, you know, it, it attempts to document the current consensus of how people think that something should be tagged. It's not necessarily a rule set. Um, and it, it attempts to document the practice that exists today, not necessarily the practice that we wish existed. So if you want to suggest something, if there's no consensus around how to tag some feature and you want to put forth a suggestion on how to do that, you can do so with a proposal. And this is just a document that you write up on the wiki and anyone can propose a tagging scheme. And proposals get discussed on the wiki and in the mailing list and then voted on and anyone can cast a vote. And proposals that reach 75% approval are considered accepted. And generally after a proposal is accepted, the proposal wiki page gets rewritten to become a, a full-fledged main wiki page that describes some consensus about how to tag that particular object. Um, it's important to understand though that proposals aren't laws. They're more like memos to the community saying, a few people got together and agreed that this was a pretty good way to tag this thing. Um, so although we, although consensus is important to us and we try to do our best to establish it, the hard pill to swallow at the end of the day is that OpenStreetMap has no strict schema. Not all tags have consensus or are well-documented. Uh, and even well-known tags can be remixed together in creative new combinations that don't necessarily make sense. Um, or maybe it's not clear what the mapper meant when they combined those tags in that way. Um, and probably the hardest issue to deal with is that OpenStreetMap is inherently incomplete. Mappers don't have to know everything about an object to map it. Um, we believe strongly in this idea of like iterative refinement where 
it's great to put something in the data set to represent that there is a feature there and someone else can come later and add more details about what kind of thing it is or specific properties or uh, things like that. Uh, for example, you know, map, OpenStreetMap includes millions and millions of buildings, but 80% of buildings in OpenStreetMap are just tagged building equals yes, which is not a very strong claim. It basically says there's a building here, but I don't know what kind. Probably it was not obvious from aerial imagery what kind of building it was. And so we, the best you could do was say, yeah, it's definitely a building. And similarly, only one in five roadways worldwide is tagged with a surface type. So like whether it's paved with asphalt or whether it's dirt or gravel. Um, and as a result of this incompleteness, data consumers always need to be making decisions about how to interpret the missing data. Um, so some tags have reasonable global implicit defaults that are safe to assume. For example, highway equals residential, and it doesn't have a one-way tag, which is how we describe one-way roads. It's very safe to assume almost no matter where you are in the world that if a highway equals residential object exists and there's no one-way tag on it, it's not a one-way road, it's a two-way road. Um, because the default value for one way effectively is no. Some tags, you can make a reasonable assumption, but only if you look carefully at the given context. So the access tag that we talked about earlier that represents who's allowed to use a thing, that doesn't have a global default. But if you look at what it's attached to, you can make good guesses. Like if you have a leisure equals park object, and, you're, and it doesn't have an access tag and you're wondering what the right value of access is there, it's pretty safe to assume that a park is a public park and that the default is probably yes. But if you have a nuclear power plant and it doesn't have an access tag, you should assume that access equals no. That's a much more reasonable implicit default in that context. And uh, finally, for some tags, there really isn't any safe assumption. And so, people who consume this data, they have to treat that data, that missing tag as unknown data. And often that means representing the fact that this is unknown to the end user. For example, if you're a map maker and you're making a ski resort map, this is, these are tags that you might find on an object, which is a, a ski run, which OpenStreetMap calls a pist. And um, if the pist difficulty tag is missing, there's no safe or good assumption about what to assume there. Is this a green beginner friendly run or is this an experts only double black diamond run? There's, there's no good decision to make there. And so I think map makers have to be prepared to pass that missing information on to the user. You have to decide, am I gonna not show this, uh, this ski run at all because I don't know what color to draw it in? Or am I going to show it, but show it in a unique style, maybe a, a dotted gray line instead of a green or a blue or a black line. Um, but data consumers always have to be thinking about these kinds of things because OpenStreetMap is inherently incomplete and will be probably forever. So that's a real challenge. So in conclusion, uh, OpenStreetMap uses this concept of tags, which are just key value pairs where key equals value and key or value are both text to describe everything in the world. Um, Mappers can combine tags however they want, and they can invent new ones if they need to. Uh, there is some degree of consensus established through documentation on the wiki and through the proposal process, but many common tags are still evolving or disputed. Um, and as a result, data consumers need to always be prepared to interpret this schema-less and incomplete data set. Um, that's all I've got. Um, I want to. Uh, I'm happy to take a question or two really quick if there are any, but um, if not, I'm happy to hand off to Kevin and then we can jump into uh, the discussion. Um, this is my email address. Feel free to ping me if you have questions that you wanna ask offline, I'd be happy to answer them. And yeah, thanks for listening.